Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 47 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In this tutorial, let's talk about PyStack Reg library in Python. That's an amazing library for image registration. Now in the previous tutorial, I talked about three or four other ways, including optical flow. And of those, optical flow is something that I definitely recommend exploring, but PyStack Reg is a very good library for uh, microscopy applications, especially whether it is uh, FIPSIM alignment or other light microscope alignment. Uh, uh, it has a lot of functions that uh, allow you to perform subpixel registration in many ways. And uh, many ways that includes rigid body, for example, affine and uh, scale rotation and so on. So uh, I did uh, provide a quick overview of this in my previous tutorial, but not much to look at here. Let's actually explore this uh, uh, in Spider. But one thing I should uh, again mention is this is uh, pretty much the same algorithm that's available under image J as Turbo Reg or Stack Reg, and it's written by Philippe or Philippe. Uh, so let's uh, jump into our Spider IDE and have a quick look at how to use this a couple of ways. Okay, again, I'm, I'm just mentioning everything from this uh, PyStack Reg uh, documentation. If you want, go ahead and read that and even gain more understanding. But uh, to begin, you need to pip install PyStack Reg. Very straightforward. I did not run into any uh, 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 issues. In fact, let's go ahead and see if I can uh, import this PyStack Reg because I just realized that uh, uh, this is a new installation uh, of Python that I'm using here. So it looks like I did uh, import uh, or install PyStack, right? So it's working fine. Okay, so let's run these lines of code. And what I'm trying to do here is, again, read a reference image and an offset image. And this image, I intentionally did offset it a bit so we can actually uh, see how it looks like uh, once we register. Okay, so now uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to show how to do this on a stack of images in a minute. Now, uh, let's actually uh, look at the translational, okay? I'm gonna show you a few of these. So step number one, translational transformation. So translation, what is it again? Translation is just moving in X and Y. No rotation, nothing, just X and Y, okay? By how much the image is moved. Uh, and for that, I'm going to in uh, or initiate or cre uh, create an operator first. Uh, and uh, the way I do that is stack reg, Remember, that's the one we are actually importing from PyStack Reg, and then stack reg dot translation. Okay, obviously, as you can imagine, for affine it would be uh, stack reg dot affine. So that's pretty much it. Once you do that, then we are going to uh, apply that. I call this output translation, and apply that sr dot register transform. Okay register transform on what on your reference image and the offset image so the offset image is registered to the reference image and uh, transformed in a way okay and uh, let's go ahead and plot the output so let's run these lines so we can have a uh, quick look at quick look at the output so if i go to the plots you can see that uh, uh, I'm just showing you the output translated. So you can see how my image is actually translated in the other direction. In fact, if you see my reference image, I'm sorry about this. Let's actually show you ref image. I'll plot all of these at the same time in a minute, but this is my reference image. Uh, I'm not sure if it's clear, but this is our offset image, yeah? the second slice that's registered. That's a pretty good registration right there. Things are slowly, uh, slightly different between two images because these are two different slices coming from uh, the FIPSIM, but they are pretty much uh, uh, nicely registered. Okay, so that's the translation. Now, if you want to apply rigid body transformation, okay, again, what is rigid body? Rigid body is translation plus rotation, right? So if you want to apply rigid body, again, let's overwrite this so we don't have too much of code. Uh, exactly the same thing. Instead of translate, you have rigid body. And application is the same. Rigid transform, ref, and offset, that's pretty much it. Okay, so let's run this just for the sake of it. And uh, you'll see uh, you'll see that it's working. it's working fine. This image is not rotated, so it's not that exciting. I just want to make sure you know how to apply this. And then I also did affine. So if you want, you can go ahead and look at how affine is done. Again, stackrace.affine. That's 
and uh, I can run it for the sake of completeness, but hopefully you got the point. Now, the more interesting part, actually, let's go ahead and uh, do all of these. Let's plot it so we can see if there is a difference. Okay, let's run all of these. Okay, so here it is. And again, just by looking, I'm not sure how much you can tell. This is the original image. As you see, all images, you have a black bar at the bottom and at the right bar, bottom at the right, yeah? So that means the image is moved back uh, left and to the top, yeah? Uh, let's uh, let's do something more fun. Let's actually, uh, I have a, a whole bunch of images in in uh, a folder here called uh, for alignment and translated all of these images as you see i progressively uh, i progressively you know moved it and then they're moving back yeah so i would like to uh, register all of these so uh, first of all let's uh, erase everything and then start from scratch okay and by the way i've written a few lines of code Instead of, I mean, there are multiple ways you can do this. Now, instead of actually uh, reading one image at a time and then doing these things, you can actually put all of these images together as a stack if you have a whole bunch of images in a folder. And the way you do that is, again, please watch my tutorial about Glob. Glob enables you or lets you walk through these folders. So now uh, I'm using gl uh, Glob and then uh, writing these images as a TIFF using TIFF file, okay? TIFF file dot TIFF writer. And I'm going to uh, write uh, all of these into the translated folder. Let's actually go ahead and run it. So I should have a TIFF stack under for alignment translated, okay? Uh, so what, what I should have saved it somewhere else, uh, translated. Start our tiff. Oh, I'm actually saving it in for alignment my image stack dot uh, tiff. So let's go ahead and uh, find that my image stack. My image stack. It's not my aligned stack. It's my image stack right here. Okay. You see how this is a tiff stack right there, a single image. So let's use that tiff stack. Okay. For to continue our tutorial here, to continue our process here. So let us delete this part and uh, run this part. So again, I'm reading my image. And in this case, this is my image stack. This is not, this is not uh, just, this is not just my single image. So let's go ahead and clear everything again. So we start from a clean slate. Okay. Now let's run only these lines of code over there. So now you can see my image array is a whole bunch of gray images, 1104 by 1720 in dimension. They are a bit large size images and I have 14 of them. Okay, so I should have 14 of them in my translated right there. As you can see, these are 14 images. So I put all these 14 images together into a tip stack. Now, again, the same thing, stack ridge dot rigid body, right? We did exactly the same thing previously. And uh, uh, the way we implement this is register transform stack. Remember previously what we did? We actually did only register transform. Okay, let me go ahead and paste it here so you can see the difference. This is what we did previously, sr.register transform. All I'm trying to do right now is register transform stack. So it knows that, okay, now I have to work on stack. And my image is, I called it image zero and what reference do I want to use to register? Remember, again, I, uh, I talked about how you can use the previous image as a reference, meaning my 10th image, it's using image number nine, and ninth image is aligned to image number eight and so on. So this is just the previous, and you can also reference to the first image if you want, but let's go ahead and do this, okay, uh, uh, to the previous one. Now, to save the output as a uh, TIFF, I'm going to first, of course, let's let's run this. Let's run these lines of code to see what's happening. This will, let's see how fast it is or how slow. Okay, so I paused the video there, but it took about 20 seconds. Okay, so it's not fast, but if you have a good computer, it may be a bit uh, faster. So uh, as you can see, so my out previous, if you pay close attention here, my image is unsigned integer eight. You see the values going from zero to 255. Now my output is float 64, which means I cannot just save it as a, a TIFF file directly. I have to convert that into unsigned integer eight. That's exactly what I'm doing here uh, as type. 
okay numpy int 8 and now i'm using tip file to save this image so tip file dot im save my align stack dot tiff and output uh, is right there so let's uh, run these lines of code and find my align stack image in for alignment my align stack right there so my image stack this is the input you see that's the input okay now let's actually open my align stack which we just saved that is an amazing job that is an amazing job as you can see I mean the border you can see from the border and by the way if you want to avoid this border now after alignment go ahead and crop it crop the image to somewhat in between in, inside here right well crop means you can use numpy to just take that okay zero to whatever the dimensions are and same with the y uh, uh, axis okay so that is an amazing job I'm still a bit uh, mesmerized by how good of a job it did so there you go so that's how uh, powerful this uh, is now to do other things like for example if you would like to register to the first image all you have to do is reference equals to first to the mean image reference equals to mean and for the uh, uh, mean of the first images again reference equals to first and then number of frames equals to 10 okay uh, and so on but Again, I'll let you explore this with other like affine. I don't have data sets to kind of show a dramatic change, you know, by uh, doing affine. I can actually manually skew this, but if you have some data sets, please go ahead and try this out and uh, please provide your feedback on whether this worked or did not work. Uh, so, uh, so other people know exactly uh, how much to trust in this. But so far of all the algorithms I've tried, this one seems to be the most stable and promising one. So I hope you loved this uh, tutorial and uh, subscribe to this channel so you can get more of such information uh, quickly. So thank you very much.